If there's one sentiment I see in my YouTube comments and Twitch stream for new chatters more than literally anything else, it's I want to clear an ultimate, but it's scary and I don't know how to get into it and I want to scream. And you know what? Same. Raiding is one of Final Fantasy XIV's main forms of endgame. One which has so many players that want to get invested in it, want to experience the appeal, want to prog and clear, but they have no idea where to start. It's intimidating watching these complex multifaceted dances and being expected that yes, you need to do that perfectly. It's fair to say I've been around the block when it comes to raiding in this game, have participated in casual 4 hour a week groups, done 16 hour per day world prog, helped a lot of groups with their clears and everything in between, and I've experienced a lot of the ups and downs that come with all of these different situations. So today, I'll be breaking down all of the knowledge I've accumulated across a decade of raiding in Final Fantasy XIV and giving you the information you need to get into raiding and to one day become a Penta Legend or in Dawn Trailer 6 Sextuple Legend. Now I'm going to teach you the biggest secret of all. Rule number one. Raiding is not as hard as it seems and you do not need to be afraid of it. You might be intimidated and think raiding isn't for you, that's normal. Apprehension or fear of new things is usual feeling pressure because you're going to be in duty with seven other people and you need to perform is totally natural. Everybody starts from this position and only once they take the plunge despite that fear do they begin to work on overcoming it. I genuinely believe that FF14 is not a game that requires any level of innate talent for success. The vast majority of your ability to play the game well comes from your motivation to study learning through trial and error and focusing on building on your mistakes and improving. You can do it. There are players that overcome their disabilities and clear ultimates. There are those with extremely limited schedules that make the most of that handful of hours a week they have and they eke out the wins. There are folk that come to the game late and catch up at an extremely accelerated pace. If you want to do it and you're willing to invest the time and energy, you can do it. I want to tell you a little anecdote about how I began raiding. When Heaven's Ward first released and I was reaching Endgame for the first time, at that time Bismarck and Ravana Extreme were the current highest EX primals and I really wanted to get into raiding, so I asked around and was quickly informed that Bismarck was easier so it was the better first port of call. I watched a clear video on YouTube and hopped in assuming that would be totally fine. One of the first mechanics in the fight has you activating these two dragon killers to tether the boss and pull him to your platform, allowing you a damage cycle, and party finder's standard strat at that point in time was to have the healers activate them. Me, a sprout white mage that didn't know that you were supposed to watch a guide, was not aware of this, and when we got to the first dragon killer activation, I just kind of stood there. I was healing, staying in my lane, being a good lad. So of course, nobody else grabs it either, and I got flamed in party chat. I was also on PlayStation without access to a keyboard, so typing took forever. So as far as they were concerned, I was essentially ignoring them flaming me as well and just standing there. Not an ideal scenario. I left after the pull, I closed the game, and I unsubbed. I felt awful about it. I griefed my party. Endgame fucking sucked. That one bad experience put me off. I know that's the case for many others as well. They have one bad experience with an arse in PF and that's it, they're done. I want to tell you that overcoming that one experience is absolutely worth it, no matter what motivation you use to do so. I came back around two months later thanks to much coercing, managed to clear both Bismarck and Ravana with a little help. I moved on to Savage, I eventually made my own group. I found joy in the loop of improving and progressing and attaining the clear. I made friends, I joined communities, and the key motivation that led me to try that extreme again after that terrible experience? Spite. I genuinely told myself, fuck those guys, I can do this. And so I did. I accepted help from those around me, I learned where to find guides, I practiced my job and I improved. I got better. Whatever your motivation, do not get one guide. Don't let that one bad experience ruin your ability to enjoy something you really like. You can do this. But where do you start? So, Endgame in FF14 functions as follows. 
You have your dungeons, your trials, your normal mode raids and your variant dungeons. All of these are what I'd consider baseline content and they come with no expectations whatsoever. Do what you want, perform how you want. I think it's fair game. Just enjoy them and don't make other people's lives harder. But if you want to take the next step, my first recommendation is to take on the current expansion's Extreme Trials. Extreme Trials have mechanics that need to be done or you're going to wipe, but not too many of them. There are DPS checks, but they aren't tight in any way, shape or form. It's a good way to introduce yourself to the expectations of endgame content in a much lower pressure situation. And the most recent Extreme Trials also factor into your gearing curve, benefiting you there. Do these first. Once you're comfortable with Extreme Trials and able to farm them without an issue, it's time to dip your toes into Savage. Savage encounters usually have a weekly lock until late in a patch cycle and are the bread and butter of endgame fights. You can expect these to take a longer period of time to progress and each raid tier has four floors with three raid tiers per expansion. Anything aside from the most recent raid tier is considered irrelevant content, ran for fun, glamour, or occasionally for best in slot gear pieces for older ultimates. Ultimates are the peak of difficult content in FF14. To even enter an ultimate, you must complete the Savage tier that released in the same gearing window as it, giving the clear sign that it is intended to be tackled once you've finished and farmed Savage, and are comfortable with the difficulties and challenges that lie there. But despite this, not all ultimates are equal. Thanks to numerous job buffs, both in their passive traits and active skills, level syncing, mechanical power creep from the game getting more complicated over time and more refined, normalized strategies and resources coming up over time, older ultimates naturally become easier. Because of all this, I consider current expansion ultimates to be the only pieces of content in the game that follow the absolute rule as you should do this after you can farm current Savage. But when it comes to previous ultimates, like the Unending Coil of Bahamut, Ultima Weapon Ultimate, and the Epic of Alexander, they don't fall quite so firmly on that linear scale. They have the speed and mechanical cadence of ultimates, and you can't just skip through them. You still have to learn and execute the fights, but the healing and mitigation requirements, as well as the DPS checks, are often way easier than those present in the latter half of even the current Savage tier, so these can often be completed before, after, or even at the same time as Savage, whichever you prefer. Criterion also factors in, and I feel like Criterion is somewhat Savage equivalent. It's a light party version with a little more feasibility to pick up and play, which often tests completely different skill sets with unique encounter design. It's worth doing for sure, but I really don't feel like it's something that I'd recommend doing before you've dipped your toes into full party content of every type. So now you know where you're at and what you want to do. How do you get a party? Well, you have two choices before you, an organized group, aka a static, or party finder. We're gonna run through the pluses and negatives of both really quickly. A static offers security and consistency, but then it requires that from you in turn. You'll get to know the people in your group feel comfortable with them, and be able to develop your own workarounds for problem mechanics together. You'll ideally reach mutual understanding and a sense of camaraderie, and be able to help one another out. You'll probably know exactly how long you're raiding for, what your raid days are, and you'll have some kind of consistent schedule, and ideally you know exactly what your goals are as a group together. That said, that means you're also subject to the misfortunes and drama that comes with a group. One problem member can have a painful knock-on effect for the other seven, and recruiting can be tough or demoralizing to do, leading to uncomfortable situations. You have to deal with scheduling, which can be a nightmare, and occasionally having to deal with the issue of lacking performance or motivation from some of your members. You get security and consistency, like I said, but that also means you have a lot of baggage to potentially carry alongside it. Party Finder is every wall for themselves. You play on your own schedule with random players and your progression is based on your own time investment, motivation and commitment to studying. And luck! 
Every party is a roll of the dice. You might get seven super consistent people who make for fast prog and help you see further than you ever have before, kindly giving advice and tips to you along the way. You might run into rude, clueless people that can't do the first mechanic of the fight every second pull. Luckily, because it's PF, you have no obligation to stay. You can just leave and find a new party or take a break. This is ideal for people with inconsistent work schedules, sicknesses that don't allow for them to raid for more than an hour or so at a time, or those that honestly just don't want to interact with others as much. Each region usually has fairly solidified party finder strats that practically everybody uses within a few weeks of new content releasing, and it's expected that you research, understand, and execute it following those strategies, and you have to do all that studying on your own time, not while you're in the PF, more on that later. If you choose to join a static, how do you find one? There are a few ways I recommend really. There are recruitment discords that you can use, which is how I found the majority of the groups I've been in, including world prog groups actually. You can advertise in Party Finder, which I think is less effective but could be a bit of a long shot. You can use Reddit, which is surprisingly good actually. You can create a group with people you already know, or join one through word of mouth. You can use social media to advertise and find groups. Lastly, you can meet people through your experiences in-game and put in your search info or drop into conversations that you're looking for a group. If you're party findering, I find it especially useful to add good players or people you get along with to your friends list. And maybe further down the line you can forge friendships or potentially even be invited to groups by then. I've included a bunch of useful resources later in this window regarding useful recruitment discords for each region, so make sure to stay until then and check it out. If you're joining a group or recruiting players for your new group, you'll likely need to organize or participate in a trial. Trials are a mutual check to ensure that you'll have a good time playing together. It's to ensure that you share a current similar skill level with the rest of the group, you have the same attitude and motivations, and more importantly, that you pass the vibe check and are on the same page in terms of expectations. I'm not gonna go in detail on how to organize a good, smart trial in this video, because it's actually a fairly interesting conversation, so maybe if there's interest, I'll make a video on that. For trials though, don't pressure yourself too much. Ask what you'll be doing in advance. Prepare, practice, study, go in as if it's a job interview and bring your A game. But how do you prepare for raid in the first place? Firstly, learn your rotation and opener for your job. There are tons of resources out there for this. In FF14, there is generally a correct and incorrect way to do most things, with a fair amount of homogenization across the board that you can generally transition from job to job without too much difficulty as long as you're very, very comfortable on one. Sit on a striking dummy as much as you can, practicing and re-practicing. And I don't mean until you can do it, I mean until you can do it without looking at the screen. Until you can turn your monitor off and do the opener correctly. Until you can do it for 10 minutes straight while watching YouTube on the side. Until it's literally second nature and muscle memory. Learn your rotation. To add on to this, it's much better to be able to do the fundamentals consistently and correctly in almost every situation than it is to learn every micro optimization possible, yet mess it up every second pull. Or worse, be one of those inconsistent players that dies to mechanics because they're too zoned in on their rotation. Your aim is to be able to do the basics correctly 100% of the time and to bringing those optimizations over time when you feel confident in doing so and comfortable with the mechanics of the fight. Whilst practicing on a dummy is an excellent start, eventually it isn't enough. What I did here when I was first getting good at FF14, and what I recommend you do too, is to queue into duties that you're comfortable with, but still engage you, and try to play your rotation perfectly within it. At that time for me, it was normal mode raid encounters, Alexander Gordius and Midas. I queued on repeat until I came out of the fight thinking, yeah, I'm happy with that. I didn't drop my dots, I didn't lose GCDs, and everybody was very safe. Basically, I kept doing it until I could do that with some level of regularity. Then eventually you keep doing it, but in harder and harder duties. From normal trials and raids, I moved into using Extreme to practice rotations and alt job optimization. And now, many years later, 
I'm finally at a point where I can comfortably drop into ultimate on pretty much any job and immediately perform decently. Bring food and potions, and ideally either a food duration FC buff or squadron rationing manuals so that you don't burn through them quite so fast. These are essential. For healers, make sure you stock the best ethers possible and use them liberally in a progression setting because they are genuinely run savers. You should also bring the best gear you possibly can, fully melded. If that's crafted gear, ideally pentameld it, though I think that's less essential unless you're doing week one or two prog of a savage fight. There will always be tons of resources out there to help you through the gear pipeline appropriately, and it is absolutely not something you should slack on whatsoever. Don't be that guy. I also recommend attempting to be a role player rather than a job player. This is more of a nice to have than an essential, but being a healer main rather than a white mage main has helped me many, many times. Being able to quickly adjust to what the group or encounter needs takes the pressure off everyone else. Don't stress yourself to instantly learn three or four jobs, but when the itch takes you, being more than a one trick is a very positive tool. It's fun as well, and it's worth your time. As a DPS, you're expected to use your mitigation and self-healing. As a healer, you are expected to DPS. And as a tank, you are expected to use your cooldown smartly. If you're a caster with a res, you are expected to be resing in prog. Your DPS is not more important. It's also pretty useful to at least have a cursory understanding of what other roles need to do in the encounter, and in general, as well as their overall capabilities. This helps you to quickly comprehend what they can and can't do, and puts you in a better position to make realistic, meaningful suggestions you can then give if things go wrong. Use your job to its fullest to make things easier for the other players around you. This leads me on to the next major point, communication. Regardless of which route you choose, it's absolutely essential to communicate with the players around you. Where you're planning your cooldowns, what's going wrong with a mechanic, how to help somebody that's struggling, Communicate rather than let a problem brew and fester, because that's a stupid way of dealing with interpersonal issues. Be respectful too. Remember these are people, and this is a video game, a hobby. If you feel yourself getting heated, that's a you problem, and it's time to take a step back and reevaluate. If you're struggling with something yourself, it's important to ask for help and acknowledge that. There is no shame in finding something hard. If you're in top, and you just keep dying to exalines, Rather than to get mad, shift blame, or give excuses, simply ask the others how they remember it, or let them give you a little call out that puts your head in the right space to solve it yourself in the moment. It's a team game, and it's okay to help the others, and in turn, to be helped yourself when you're having a hard time. Rather than to be worried about making mistakes, it's much more positive to treat making a mistake as an opportunity to learn from it. So if you wipe the run, instead of being annoyed or demoralized, think on why did you wipe? What did you do wrong? What can you learn from this to avoid that happening next time? As long as you do that, the pull wasn't wasted and the group did not lose anything because you gained collective knowledge. If others are getting hit by the same thing, share what you learned with them which can cut additional wipes to more players having the same eureka moment that you just hopefully had. You should also be fully focused while playing in a group environment. This should be common sense to a lot of you, but I've ran into more than a handful of players that are either in another call, watching videos or more on the side and are playing terribly because they're distracted and aren't able to multitask very well. If that's the case, raid takes priority and doing anything else is just honestly disrespectful to the other seven people in the party. Next up is study. Unless you're explicitly doing blind progression, you should be studying. There are mechanical guides, job guides, optimization advice, and more. You can have discussions with your groups in Discord before raid via chat or call and figure out what you plan on doing in terms of strats and so on. And you can all study up so that you waste as little time as possible when you actually get in there. In PF, it's an expectation that you know both the mechanic and what's coming next. Another big thing is to have realistic expectations and goals, both for yourself and if you're in a static, for your group. In a group, 
from what I've seen, the leading issue that leads to a messy disband is when the players are not on the same page in terms of the group's goals and expectations. Let's say, for example, three players have the expectation that the Static will clear the Savage tier in the first few weeks, and whilst they have three days scheduled, more days if we want was discussed as a throwaway and those players very much want to do them. The other five don't care so much how fast they proc, and they aren't quite as motivated to study outside of raid to make the sessions as efficient as possible. They've also got zero inclination to take more than the scheduled days. It was just a throwaway conversation. It's fine. We have our scheduled days. This is going to become a problem at some point. People are not on the same page, which will lead to frustration, which will lead to resentment that will eventually spill into the overall atmosphere and sour things. Usually it doesn't end well. Had the group properly and honestly discussed the expectation beforehand, and if players had been open with themselves about if they were happy with those expectations, and if they desired them the same amount, this could likely have been alleviated. Regarding players and their own personal goals, I genuinely believe many have a very unhealthy mindset on how they set their goals in their hobby. I will clear this fight by X date, or on Y week, is so much unnecessary pressure and it builds a toxic environment for yourself. This can lead you to get annoyed easily, or to not be pleasant to deal with for other players. I think a much healthier process is to go into Raid or PF with the mindset of I want to learn something, or I want to get better. All of this content is a chance to learn something new, to improve yourself as a player, or to work towards your more tangible goals through those. A bad party may not provide you with the clear you've been seeking, but what it could give you is a lot of situations where things go wrong that you can learn from to apply in the future. It could give you practice in recovering bad situations, allow you to react, making adjustments that can fix mistakes that you can then take into parties with a real shot of clearing. You learn a lot about your job and its limits when you're put in bad scenarios and need to use your head to save a pull, and it feels really good to do and it's fun to do as well. This also means that instead of seeing your entire progression cycle as a failure until you get the clear, you can also celebrate the small victories. You got better at that mechanic, and now you can do it consistently. You saved a pull that went wrong with a quick adjustment. You sacrificed yourself to save a healer, and then they heal Albeed and you saw prog. You made the right play. These are all wins, and are much healthier in terms of your personal growth than just, but we didn't clear yet. This is also very useful as you climb the ladder past just wanting to clear and potentially want to aim towards hardcore and world prog. The clear will come. It's not a goal. It's an immovable destination that you know will happen. Playing your best and providing the most you can to the people around you during that process is the real goal, because that's how you actually clear quickly. This is also especially important because, as I've alluded to, Every single person in the world has strengths and weaknesses. There is no perfect player. Learning to accentuate your strengths whilst minimizing your weaknesses is the way you will improve. And you will do that through being honest with yourself and always being open to learning from every single pull, no matter how good you think you are. But how do you prog efficiently? Firstly, give yourself as many tools as you can to improve your chances. No. I'm not talking about becoming an augmented gamer with more assistance tools than Robocop. Things like recording your gameplay or using Shadowplay, so you can easily watch back clips of things worth studying. Are you consistently messing up on something and you can't figure out what you're doing wrong? Share the video to the group, watch together, and let them tell you how to fix it. You can do the same with screenshots using Snipping Tool. You can even use something like Epic Pen to allow you to draw on the footage itself to further showcase your points. Stuff like this is absolutely invaluable to your progression. Use strat images, or make cheat sheets for yourself. Almost everyone in my group uses these at time, even during world progression. Having visual aids up on your second monitor to pull up mid-pull are an absolute godsend, and the strat images themselves make it a lot easier to digest, and formatting them yourself into little cheat sheets that work to you and your own particular learning style is even better. If you're in a static, Share responsibility. Having one person take on the burden of strat organization, scheduling, and shot calling is, pardon my French, absolutely fucking stupid. It's a collaborative effort, and you should take on responsibilities based on your strengths. 
Often in prog, my group lets the person that gets comfy with the mechanic first call it out from then onwards. That works very well. Our quote-unquote group leader doesn't even deal with scheduling. We have a very analytically minded player who's good at chasing people up, and he loves spamming ads on Discord, and he was more than happy to take that over. Taking a little of the burden each makes for a much more positive environment. Speaking of shot calling, having verbal reminders of upcoming mechanics can be a godsend and is valuable to do, but it's important to do it in a useful way. For example, raid wide name one, not valuable. Saying raid wide is a lot easier and more helpful. Bringing to attention that a set piece mechanic that everyone needs to focus on is about to happen, useful. Telling someone not to mess it up this time mid pull, unhelpful and kind of rude. Keep comms clean, helpful, and cater to who you're playing with and what they need. Also, did I say before? Ask questions, inquire, query, probe. Do an ask if you're not sure, yeah? It helps a lot. In progression, always play for safety and consistency over everything else. You do not need to go for that extra GCD if you're worried it might wipe the raid. It's okay to lay down the extra healing GCD if you're not 100% sure HP is high enough. I can tell you right now, you putting in one safety GCD of healing is not the reason you enraged. There are tons of other issues elsewhere if that's the case. The only thing that matters is getting to your prog point and practicing. Everything else is secondary. You should not be playing for a pass or to survive the longest or for the funny meme. You're playing to get to prog point and then to practice it. That's it. Next up is to make sure you understand a mechanic rather than just learning your spots. Learning your spots is an acceptable starting point because that's the bare minimum you need to do to be able to execute a mechanic under ideal circumstances. So of course you need to know that. But if you don't know the goal of a mechanic and the core steps required to reach that goal, the bigger picture, you will not be able to make adjustments if things go wrong as easily. You can't help others learn. You can't optimize as smartly. You'll be slower to position, less confident. Understanding a mechanic is so superior to just learning where to go that it is not even a comparison. Now let's look at a few resources. You're going to find all of these linked in the video description as well. Regarding encounter guides, you can usually find general guides on Hector Hectorson's YouTube channel or my own YouTube channel, both of which I recommend. Crazy that I'd recommend myself, right? I mentioned that often different regions have their own strats and there are sometimes Discord servers that aggregate those strats for each region. For EU, there's the LPDU Discord, specifically for Ultimates. For OCE, there's the Materia Raiding website. North America has the PF Strats website, and the English-speaking side of the JP Data Center community uses the Elemental DC Raid Macros Discord server. Regarding jobs, there's a plethora of written and video guides out there on the internet. I can say that in Dauntrow, I'll be making some that I will make sure are good. <laughs> That's a little bit of self-promotion. Honestly, a lot of job guides I've watched are very surface level, and whilst in some cases that's all you're looking for, I'm more inclined to recommend the balance as a good resource for improving at your jobs right at this moment over many of the YouTube videos I've seen. Just to do my due diligence, I know that many have had less than stellar experiences with the balance community itself, so enter the chats at your own risk. For recruitment discords, Europe generally uses the European Raiding Central, which again, avoid the general chat if you plan on going there, but the recruitment section, very good. JP uses the Elemental EN Raid Discord server. For North America, you can use the FF14 Recruiter website, which is gaining traction over time, as well as the FF14 Recruitment Discord. All in all, I hope everything I've discussed today gives you a little bit of a better picture on where to begin or continue your raiding journey from, either by appointing you in the right direction or by giving you information you didn't know yet. And if you have questions, just ask in the comment section because I will be reading them and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you have. I want to work hard on increasing the tools and resources I have available to players in the coming months. And this is one of my first attempts to do so. So if there's something that you'd like to see me make a video on that could inform you further, or honestly just might be interesting, please do let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and please have a fantastic rest of your day.